Hello everyone, welcome to the Tea Crane. I'm Tia Sosen and I am in my Misia, the kitchen sort of that we use in the tea ceremony. And um, I'm not gonna explain the whole functioning of this in this video, we'll do that in another video. What I want to do today is I want to introduce you to how to clean and care for your tea whisk using um, these peculiar looking blue things, the Kuse Nawashi as well. And for that, as I understand that most of you will be doing this in a, in a regular kitchen, uh, we'll be going downstairs and I'll be showing you how to clean and care for your tea whisk in the kitchen downstairs. And back by popular demand, I will be putting this on my forehead and I'll be videoing what I'm, um, what I'm doing and how I'm, whisk, um, how I'm cleaning the whisk. So. I've had a video where I did a tea ceremony using this GoPro on my head, uh, so now by popular demand I'm going to use this again because a lot of you seem to really like that kind of angle. Now before we go downstairs um, I would like to remind you to please like, subscribe and also click the bell icon to get updates and notifications of new content that I'm putting out. This really helps the channel and helps me to um, produce more content and um, so please don't forget to like, subscribe and click the bell icon. So that being said, let's go downstairs. So we have the used tea whisk. Uh, we've just made a bowl of matcha and we want to make sure that we clean the tea whisk thoroughly and also make sure that there's no matcha powder remaining on the in, uh, on the tines on the inside as well as on the outside. So first what we do is we rinse it out with running water. Having done that, the next thing we want to do is we want to put our forefinger in between the outer tines and the um, inner tines so that we can with our forefinger and thumb, clean off on each individual tine or, well, we might do three or four at the same time, clean off the matcha powder that might be sticking to it. So this will extend the lifespan of our tea whisk and will make sure that it will, well, remain clean for a long time. After having done that, we want to rinse the tea whisk out again. And you might actually even want to use your forefinger on the inside as well while you're, rin while you're rinsing it. Finished doing that, you want to make sure that all the drops are shaken off. And then you use a towel to wipe the handle and also wipe the tea whisk with the tines over the towel so that you can dry them off. This should dry your tea whisk. And then one more thing to look for which is very important is to see if any of the tines are broken or not. Some might be a little bit bent and if they are bent you might want to break them off before you use it again. So you check for bent tines and some loose tines because it's worse if they come off in your tea and so it's better to tear them off here. This is already a very old tea whisk and um, well the next thing we need to do as you see is it's gotten a little bit tight here. We want to put it in shape again so uh, next we're going to use the shaper to bring it in shape. So we have cleansed our tea whisk and now the next thing that we want to do is we want to shape it back into its pristine shape. This is what a pristine shaped tea whisk looks like. That's um, how we want to get our tea whisk back. And now, well, after a lot of use, it's gotten like closed up or uh, like this one, a little bit out of shape. So for shaping the tea whisk, we use this tool, which is often referred to as a chasen tate. But that's what it's not. It's a kuse nawashi. And chasentate means tea whisk stand. We don't use it as a stand, we use it as a straightener. And that's what the word kuse nawashi means. The way we use it is on a tea whisk that, is, that we've just washed. 
we press the T-whisk on and we see the tines come open, we want to use it in this way so that we can give it the original shape back. And don't be afraid of pushing a little bit too hard, the T-whisk won't break. Having done that, we want to keep the T-whisk off and let it dry besides the Kusei Naoshi because if we keep the T-whisk on, then there is no room between the tines of the T-whisk and the Kusei Naoshi. And if there's moist still on the T-whisk, then you could create mold. And that's not going to affect your tea in a good way. So I highly recommend you just use it as a shaper, leave the tea whisk off, set it to dry beside it, and just use it anytime you need to reshape your tea whisk. All right, so interesting trivia to close this um, video off with. Each tea whisk usually has these threads on the outside. These threads, they, um, they're basically the knot for this cord that is around the tines that divides the inner tines and the outer tines. And on most tea whisks, these are sticking out. However, when we look at this tea whisk, you can see if I turn it around, there are no threads sticking out. Um, the only thing that you have is the knot here that is tied and those knots they are tied on the inside. This is the type of tea whisk that we use in the Inshu school. And we choose this basically for the sake of cleanliness. We believe that um, not having those threads sticking out could make the tea whisk more appealing, more aesthetically appealing. So I hope this has helped you and this will also allow you to take longer and better care of your tea utensils.